always, uh, <laughs> the year is flying by. It's May of 2021. It is a great honor today to be chatting with uh, Jamie Elman. And Jamie is a 17-year educator. I've got you beat by a couple more, a couple years. <laughs> uh, and if I'm not mistaken, you are currently teaching U.S. and world history at Johnson High School in Buda, Texas. Yeah, and it's actually, I'm not from Texas. I, I've moved here last summer. You say it's Buda. Buda, okay. Buda, Texas. Yep. Thank you for correcting <laughs> me on that one. That's important, right? South of, it's just south of Austin, and so yeah. Okay. <laughs> And if you want to follow uh, Jamie, you can follow her on Twitter at twitter.com and it's MSJ Elman. So Ms. J Elman, if you mm -hmm. put that all together and you can also your teacher page, your website is really more for probably more for your students, but it's MSElman.com. So feel yeah. free to. Yeah, that was before that was last year before we had like the Schoology stuff. So it was really nice to have everything in one place for the kids to go to. So they don't really use it this year, but. I have it, it is nice. Yeah. And it's nice, I think, for parents as well, if they yes. want to just, you know, see what you're all about. Uh, mm -hmm. And I really like the how uh, creative and colorful the, the page was. So That's nice me. job on that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So welcome. And we'll start off with the toughest question of the day, which is, are you a coffee drinker? And if so, what's your favorite blend? Okay. Yes. And so it all started back in this. I know exactly when it started back 1983. Um, I was a ski racer in Vermont and I went to a private school. So like ski racers, of, you know, in eighth grade, I went for the winter term and that was when coffee really started to be kind of cool. And there was green mountain coffee roasters in, you know, in our little Waitsfield, um, yeah, Vermont. And that was like the cool thing to do, you know, to be able to go and like, be like, we're going to go get a coffee. So when I was like 13 and 14 was when I first started, started that. And so I've been hooked ever since, but I, but I was spoiled. It's kind of like if the first, you know, when, if you're becoming like a beer connoisseur and you start drinking microbrewery beer, like that was like how it was with coffee for me. So once I started drinking good coffee, I only like really good. <laughs> I'm kind of a snob about it. So like, I don't even like, just, I won't ever just drink a regular cup of coffee. I have an Italian stovetop press and that's what I have every morning is wow. my, a little, my espresso. Well, I've been, you know, Italy is like, that's where I would move to if I could, but little espresso and some uh, raw sugar and a little silk creamer. That's like what I have every morning when I wake up. So yes, <laughs> that's uh, that's very serious. Well, and I have a new favorite one. I'm going to share with you my new, this, everyone should know this drink just, so you know, it's very important. Okay. I know some people don't like Starbucks, but you don't have, you can make it yourself. So there's a new drink. It's brown sugar. Uh, okay. Wait, brown sugar, oat milk, shaken espresso. It sounds really fancy, but all of it, you can, you make a brown sugar, simple syrup. It's just like one-to-one -one, you boil it and then, and then you just mix it with some espresso and oat milk. And it is the most delicious thing you've ever had. So, wow, and I, that sounds good. That sounds good. I'll send you the recipe. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I talked just briefly about where you are now. Can you tell me your educational journey? Tell me, you know, where you've been as a teacher, your inspirations, the schools, universities. Mm -hmm. um, so my mom, she, she actually passed away in 93. She was a teacher. Um, her mother was a piano teacher. So I kind of Sorry, that's my schoolie. I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs> it's okay. it's going to be dinging. Sorry, okay, people. That's I'm fine. at school right now. <laughs> um, so my mom was a teacher. And, and literally, it's the, even though my dad was a doctor, I've always wanted to be a teacher. It's the only job I wanted to do. And I went to college immediately. And that's what I knew I wanted to do. So I started, I went to UVM. I was a ski racer at the University of Vermont in Burlington and went right in and got my BA in English and my secondary teaching certificate. I did transfer and graduated CU Boulder because we moved there. And then that's where I had my first teaching job at Longmont High School. And that experience was really cool because I got hired on to, to go teach. I was an English teacher, but I went in and my first year I taught English. But then the woman that I was kind of, you know, she was on maternity leave. So when she came back, they wanted to keep me. So they kind of were like, hey, would you want to teach? world geography. And I said, yeah, I'd love to do that. So then I started doing that. Then they needed me to teach police academy, which to this day is one of my favorite classes that I've ever taught. I basically was the facilitator every day. And they had like 
you know, like a probation officer or the canine unit, or we'd go to the courthouse. And I mean, it was, it was really fun. So I did all kinds of, I taught so many different things at that job. And I was there for about seven years. And then I took a little bit of a break because I was home with my kids. I ran businesses out of my own home, but I wasn't full-time teaching. And then I came back to teaching in 2009 in um, New Mexico. I subbed for two years while I got my license there and just kind of, I wanted the flexibility and I I really liked it because I could be in my kids' schools. And then I took a job at a middle school there that I taught and I taught there for seven years teaching eighth grade um, U.S. history. And... Last year, I moved up to high school because I kind of missed being there. And it was my youngest child's last year in high school. So I got to teach a push and U.S. history last and world history last year um, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And then we moved. So now I'm in Texas and I'm here teaching at this school. Um, so I kind of never know how many years I've been teaching because I really started teaching in 1995. But I had a little <laughs> bit of a break. So now I teach this year um, U.S. history and world history on level classes. And I, I love these are like, I love teaching these classes so much. So even through a pandemic, you know, as you have told your story, it's really fascinating that you've really kind of bounced around uh, quite mm-hmm. a bit, including yeah. starting off at the East coast and now towards the West coast. Do you think um, your travels have kind of inspired your, your passion for history and culture? I think so. Yeah. Because I mean, especially being an, I loved teaching in out in New Mexico because I just feel like the culture is so rich. And, you know, when you're talking about, um, and that, and especially when I taught middle school teaching kind of, you know, through colonization, through reconstruction, um, really, really talking about like where we live, you know, I would tell them like, you look out the window and we live on reservation land you know, and to really be able to make those connections about, you know, people came here, like here where we live. Um, and, 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 you know, and I think, and I had, I had students who were Native Americans who actually lived on reservations in my classroom. So that just having those connections, you know, that, I mean, their families are, are still, you know, living in those places um, where a lot of you get to this is what happens when you're when I'm when I when I talk to you at school that's, that's, that's the next that's the, sorry that's the next that's okay. I'm like trying to turn off all the sounds <laughs> um so yeah I love that part and even coming here you know being able to just just live in a place I feel like that's so culturally rich and I think I probably would find that anywhere I live because that's important as a teacher to make those connections with your students um it makes learning you know when, when it's relatable to students um, I think that it's more meaningful and they're more engaged when they can be like, yeah, that's my family. Like, this is my family's history or, you know, walk outside and there's the petroglyphs. Um, so I love, that's probably one of the things I do the most as a teacher is making, um, those connections to the kids' lives so that they're more interested in learning. I mean, if it, if they're not connected to it, they're not going to be interested. So I, that's something I really focus on a lot. So I saw where I kind of connected with you was through your article in Ed Tech Magazine or someone was, I guess, interviewing you maybe yeah. for it or ch- chatting with you about it. And let me just get the title of the article. Mm-hmm. So that's important. And it was called um, Ed Tech Essentials, A History Teacher's Must Have Tech List. And that was in Ed Tech Magazine. I'll make sure I put a link to it uh, without giving up everything because we do want people to read the article and, and give uh, EdTech Magazine some some kudos. Um, can you tell us a little bit about some of your uh, must-have tech list items? Well, I, I start by talking about, um, I mean, I use, I can do anything. I have a Mac. I'm literally sitting in front of, I'm talking to you on a Mac and I have a PC here. So I'm a nerd. I mean, I, <laughs> I really am like, uh, this is a perfect, you're the perfect person to talk to. I, I'm one of those kids who had like the first Mac, like, what is it? 128 K like that first Macintosh. Oh, yeah. computer. I had that. I mean, and my That's dad, great. my dad was like one of those, people thought it was so weird. He was online meeting people in France. You know, he was meeting, he had online friends when it first happened. So I've always been doing this. And so, and I, you know, I wrote HTML code when my son was born so that I could have a web page that everyone could see pictures of him. So I'm just, I'm a nerd. I say all the time, I am just such a nerd about technology. I've always wanted 
I've always been really involved with getting it um, to teachers wherever I am, you know, and been involved with different things like Discovery Ed. Um, I was a part of that. So I'm, but I will say I love Google. We, most school districts, I want to say most school districts are pretty connected with Google. I mean, the last few school districts where I've taught, we've used Google. Um, so I do everything with Google. I'm Google like level two certified. Um, so Google I'll start with is, is just essential for me and how I do everything. You know, it's so nice to be able to throw up a Google slide deck on, you know, in class and have kids easily share out with each other and, and do all those things. So I'll start with that. I mean, I'm fortunate that that's something that we get to use and that it works seamlessly, um, with Schoology, which is our other, we use that in our school district this year. I was a little bit, um, hesitant at first because I had just been doing all Google Classroom stuff at the end of last year. So then, but it was fine. I, I figured it out with the help of quite a few people um, on Twitter, my, my PLN people, they really, man, there's some that really, I mean, it, that is a whole other topic, you know, we could spend hours talking about, but my, you know, people on there, like I, that I could get on and be like, hey, does anyone know how to do this? And someone's like, hey, when are you free? And someone I've never met before get, jumps on a Zoom call with me and is like, here, do this, do this. And it's like, okay, thank you. That's <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah. So Schoology, but I will say probably the two other most important things that I've used this year, I could not do. I mean, I really couldn't have taught this year with, without them. Cami. I love Cami, the PDF annotator. My kids use it all the time. Um, everything, I mean, and it's funny because they're so used to using, doing everything with Cami that I like a week or so ago, I uploaded something for my world kids um, that was just a Google doc. And it was like fill in the blank notes. Like I was lecturing and they, so they, they had to go in and God forbid, they had to erase the lines to write their answers. And they were like, Ms. Elman, we don't, this takes too long. Can you please put this, a PDF in for, so we can use Cami? <laughs> <laughs> like they were so bugged. They were like, oh, this is taking forever. We can't do this, that we hate this. Like put, please. And I, so I'm like looking at them like, seriously, you need me to do this right now? They're like, yes, please. So I, I'm not kidding you. I stopped. I saved it as a PDF, re-uploaded it. And they were like, oh, this is so much easier. Like, it makes me laugh. Like a year ago, they didn't even know how to do any of this. And now they're complaining that if they don't get to use Cami as their, you know, to edit their, their work. So Cami is amazing. I absolutely love that. And then I will say Edpuzzle has been, I mean, absolutely the way that I've taught this year. Um, you know, being able to put in recorded lectures and then because at my school, kids had a choice to be in class or at home. And so um, the kids at home, in order for me to be able to, you know, make sure that they're doing what they're doing and not just filling out the notes and copying it from someone else, um, you know, Ed Puzzle's awesome. Are you familiar? Have you used Ed yes. Puzzle? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Big yeah. fan. Big fan. I, I love it. I mean, for me to be able to, you know, either take a lecture or a little clip or whatever it is I want them to watch and put in a few questions, you know, and then be able to monitor it, see that they've done it. And what I love is that, again, that was connected to Schoology. So if I put in multiple choice questions, it grades it and it's put into Schoology and I don't do anything with it. Um, you know, when I have to answer it, when I go read their questions, it's, it's a little bit different, but still it works with, it, it's connected and that makes life so much, I mean, I don't know how I would have done my, I mean, I, we have Nearpod as well, but I didn't use that quite as much. Um, and, you know, I didn't really like Pear Deck's awesome, but I didn't use it as much because I had kids in my classroom and kids at home. Um, I did some self-paced Pear Deck activities and I like that, but in terms of being able to go in and connect it all, it, it was a little, it wasn't, it didn't quite work with what I was doing. I think if I were fully remote, I would have used Pear Deck every day. Pear Deck is awesome. Um, just to have the kids be engaged and stuff, but yeah. So those are my, my top one. I mean, I, I have so many, I've taught my kids all kinds of, Chrome, you know, we use Chrome extensions and these kids, I think it's so cool. I can tell them, Hey, pull up your ed puzzle and your notes, split screen it. And they use the dual S split screen, you know, thing. And they know how to use light shot screenshotting. And I mean, all the, they know how to do a lot. They, you know, when I hear about learning loss, it kind of, it gets my, blood boiling a little bit because maybe they're maybe they have a little bit of content learning loss but I to me I feel like the skills that they've learned this year 
are just invaluable. I mean, the things that they can do on the computer, I think they're things that they'll take with them, you know, forever. So uh, I love that part. They can do so much with their computers and, and that. So that's my, my opinion. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. And, and let me ask you this. So if you use Edpuzzle a lot, do you create your movies or you, do you rely on uh, snagging movies um, it just, it from depends. other sources? It depends. Um, I do kind of a combination of all of it. We were really lucky that we had like the, with my world team, we have a teacher who has a ton of stuff that's already recorded. So we were able to use, and you know, with his recorded lectures, he had, you know, notes already. So when it's done, when that's done, I mean, you know, he, I'm like, Hey, this is my friend. I, I'm not going to spend another, you know, hour trying to create something that I, if I already have it. So I, I'm totally a believer in not reinventing the wheel if you don't have to. We have, we have so much going on in our worlds right now. If I can use something like that and it gets the content to the kids and it's 10 minute, a 10 minute video, then I'm going to do that. So a combination of all of it. I usually put my questions in because I want to make sure that, you know, they're getting what I, the, the information, the targeted learning that, that I kind of have set out for them. So do you have, um, some go-to YouTube resources or video streaming resources. Um, what comes to mind for me is Simple History. I don't know if you've uh -huh. seen that video Yeah, no, series. I love that. My yeah. son loves that. And I, think I just, swear he yeah. learned so much from it. I actually have two of those videos that we're watching tomorrow for um, <laughs> the, and I love, I love the, yeah. Cause again, I'm a visual learner. So I think I love the little, you could, they almost look like, you know, the little Funko Pop guys kind of. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice. laughs> No, so I use that. I, I, I will say um, I use Crash Course a little bit. Um, I'm really excited for the new Crash Course series that's coming out. Did you see that there's going to there's a no, black I history. didn't. Yeah, there's a whole like 50 series, like Black History Crash Course series wow. that's coming out. So that'll be really cool. With Jen um, Green or? No, no, a different person. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, it's part of that. I, I can't remember who it was, but I saw that recently. So that's exciting. Um, you know, I, I use a number of different things. I really just, I always make sure the quality is good and it's just the content is engaging and not, you know, some video from 50 years ago. I, I really love, and I never say his name, right? But Daniel, um, Daniel, it's spelled J-O-C-Z. He's on Twitter. He's an amazing um, history teacher and does a lot of A push content and his okay. videos. So I used it a lot. Joe's, I think is how you say it. He's hilarious okay. and he makes the best videos. But for my A push kids last year, they were great little, I like that better than Crash Course. And so this year for my US kids, even though it's kind of more information than they needed, the fact that it was so condensed and he has cool like, uh, PDF notes that my kids could use. So I love using his stuff, but I, I spend a lot of time finding good content, things that I know that, you know, that they'll be interested in watching. Cause I, my biggest pet peeve are kids who are bored or want to put their heads down on the desk. So that doesn't happen in my classroom <laughs> 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 ever. I owe bell to bell. They're working and have, they have something to do. And if they finish, I, I make sure that there's always something for them to be working on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's my, that's one of my big things. So you mentioned kind of video. Um, let me just kind of explore this a little bit more with you because I, I was a former elementary teacher and social studies was my passion just because that was my interest. But I often felt like I wasn't as good of a social studies teacher. And this is, you know, going back uh, quite some time ago um, <laughs> because I wasn't, um, you know, again, back in the day, it was textbooks, right? It wasn't flashy videos and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and so I think it was dull. I, I, that was the thing that always would hurt my feelings. When the kids say this social <laughs> studies is boring. I'm like, no, right. look, no, you just, yeah. you just wounded me. Um, yeah. <laughs> but so like, what are ways for today's, you know, tech savvy teachers to, and, and I think we've kind of already hit on it with, with video, but are there other kind of suggestions you have for making history engaging and not just, you know, buzzers and whistles, but actually solid content. So, I mean, video embedding that is, are there some other tech tools yeah, or yeah. Just and strategies? I'm, and I'd love to even, sh I could show you a couple like of my hyper slides decks if you, like, if you want to see, because my students, um, like, and I, it's not that I don't have any, I have nothing against a good textbook, but I, kids just see textbooks and they like, 
immediately are like, no, like they just, and I will tell you my 11th graders have not opened up the textbook that I have for this class once this year, um, because we just can get information. There's so many other ways that we can get information and we have an online textbook, but even then we just didn't use it because, and, and it's not all about like, Oh, ditch that textbook. Like, and that's great. But in a way it kind of is because I just feel like if you spend the time, there's so many places where you can get such great information um, you know, and by doing, you know, web quests, like my kids today are doing a World War One web quest. So for me, it's that whole backwards by design planning. And what what is it that I need my kids to know? I start with that. And then to be able to kind of, you know, go in and find different websites like the History Channel, or it might be a video. Um, this is what happens in this high tech classroom. <laughs> if I'm not moving, it's like, okay, yeah. then the lights go up. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna move. So they okay. come back off. <laughs> well, I know, isn't that funny? This will be okay. Now they're back on. <laughs> there we go. I know it's hilarious to me because it's too dark. All right, um, but yeah. So and I can show you if you'd like, like even something that um, I don't know. Do you want me sure. to show yeah. you? Yeah. Let me okay. uh, make you a co. I think I have to make you the host. So let me hold on. I'm gonna. Open can you that share one. your screen? Does it let you share your screen as it stands oh. now? Um. Let me see. Um, no, not okay. yet. Okay, so let me make you the host and then. Okay. Um, and I think once you see this, it will make a lot more sense, like kind of how, how, um, how so we can do this, you know, for the kids in it. And it kind of, you know, I was talking with someone yesterday about um, a potential, a, a, a kind of potential job I'm looking to do um, and that's another whole thing, but uh, that I'm excited about, but, you know, I was talking about the sales part of it and they were asking me about like my um, experience in sales and I've, I've run my own business. I managed a retail store like in college and I kind of, you know, had this little epiphany because I'm, I've been very good at, I was very good at sales. And then I thought, you know what, being a teacher, if, if you're not good at sales, you're probably not going to be very good at teaching because basically we are selling information to the kids on a daily basis right mm -hmm. and it, i mean they have to be interested in what you're selling to them or they're not going to want to buy it so it's kind of like i had this like like analogy you know that came to me yesterday and, and that's kind of you know how i teach i want things to be um interesting for my kids I, because i know how i am i'll if i if it's boring i just i'm done and I think I heard last year, Gen Z kids have like a five to seven or five or seven second attention span. So think about that when you're planning yeah. your curricula. That is not very, <laughs> not very long. Exactly. <laughs> hold on. Okay. Hold I think on. I heard uh, that somewhere too. Someone else mentioned that. Isn't that so that. sad? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I will tell you that I, um, um, I, a lot of the stuff that I've used this year is not stuff that I like created. Um, I will find stuff and tweak it and curate it to make it fit for what I'm, you know, what I'm looking for. So I can't take credit for some of the stuff that I'll show you. Hold on, Vietnam. I'm trying to show you, show you my, uh, sorry. One of, I should have pulled it up because I didn't know one of the kids activities. So this was one of the major grades for our Viet for teaching them about Vietnam and Vietnam in Texas comes in like the second part of the cold war, um, unit. So let me see. Okay. I can share now. I mean, you'll see this and you'll be like, wow, this is super cool. Like I want to do this because like, I see this. Can you see it now? Mm -hmm. Yep. So this was Amanda Sandoval who you should tag. Cause Amanda Sandoval is probably, I mean, she has saved, hundreds, if not thousands of people's lives this year um, <laughs> as a teacher, because she, I think she creates the most amazing content out there. Um, she's incredible with what she's done. And she's been doing this for years. This, this was not just this year. So she had some of this even before beforehand. So she's really been ahead of the curve. Um, but this was something that we worked on probably for two weeks. Um, and this was one of their main assignments. And so you can see that it's, um, is it loading? Come on. Okay. So, you know, there are videos and there's links and there's tasks. And mm -hmm. so as they're going through, you know, there's some background information, they're going to click on that. And then they come over here to the, so they watch a video and then the next slide, 
they're coming in. I don't know why everything's being so slow. Come on. It's, this is a really long, there's a lot of pages in this deck. That's um, amazing. So this was, this was kind of, you know, met, mixed up and then they dragged everything around and then they did the timeline. So, you know, it's just, and then the next thing they do is they go and they take a quiz and then you'll see, then they just take a screenshot or, uh, you know, they, they show me what they got on it. So it's like, you know, super interactive, you know, they're reading here and it's like drag and drop one, two, three, four show. And so they're getting their information, but they're not just sitting there and having to read out of a book, which we know, like you said, is that's just kids just don't want to do that. And this one was cool. Like it, I mean, it, it did, it covered everything, you know, this, this one is all about, isn't it awesome? This. Who is this? Who makes these? So um, Amanda Sandoval, she Amanda teaches in Sandoval. California. Yeah. And she's, I think she's just Amanda Sandoval on, um, on Twitter, but she incredible. is incredible. Like I, if, if I were like, Hey, does anyone have, you know, if you look through us history stuff, everyone's asking her in high school, do you have something like even just today, yesterday, she posted something or today on civil rights. And it's so cool. Like I was looking at what she posted today. I've, I'm already past that, but you can see that it's, you know, so one of the things, my kind of major thing that my philosophy as a teacher that I tell my kids is that you learn best when you hear it, see it, say it, do it. I learned that when I got my master's degree, I, we did a lot with metacognition and, you know, how we learn best. And so I, I really try and teach my students to um, know how they learn best. And so they, they can see that they're never going to get information just one way. I mean, I'm so visual. They walk in, there's, you know, I have a projector with the daily agenda and everything we're doing for the day. Um, I'll show you, this is what, when they come in my room, um, hold on, I'll show you what they, what they see every day. <laughs> and I'm always kind of silly. I, today it's not a very silly one, but I usually have some sort of silly gif like in this one spot, but you know, now when we sign on, I have my Zoom kids, I have my kids here and the Zoom kids like, let me know they're there. I have them go see what we're doing for the day. Cause this is like my bell ringers and agendas are all on this one slide. And this is really slow today. <laughs> That's okay. but, this is, but yeah, so like I'm so visual, so they see it and then I read it to them and then they're going to do it because they do the bell ringer. Um, you know, today we're studying for the star review, but they get to see like, this is what we have going on. This is what's due. And then there's usually like, then the next slide is the bell ringer slide. Um, but today we were doing star review test stuff. So this was like, they're, they're, they had bell ringer stuff that they needed to do. So, you know, I, I think that with those hyper slides like that, I just think they, they're learning, like it's like to them, they don't feel like they're really learning, but they're reading and watching and doing. And so they really, it's, they, they learn so much information doing things that way. And that's, that's how I teach, you know? So, yeah. That's really cool. And I think, you know, if you think of the Sam R philosophy, <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> I, I'm, I'm guessing you're familiar with the Sam R model and of at tech. I mean, it really, it seems like you've gone way beyond the substitution level to that redefinition yeah. Yeah. option, which is where I think we need to make and sure. And I think that's why it. I was so excited this year, because to me, this is like, this is how I teach <laughs> the kids today were like talk because I handed them, we had a packet that were an actual physical packet for the star review test. And um, I said, you guys, I'm giving you paper. And they were like, <laughs> oh, I haven't, I mean, I have copies all year because we do everything online. And they were like, and someone said, I can't wait for next year. And I said, um, they have a contract with Schoology for two years. That's not going away. And they're like, one girl was like, I'm going to still, I'm just going to request paper next year. I was like, no, it's not, it doesn't work like that. But yeah. I mean, for me, I've loved it. And, you know, I think kids at the beginning of the year were a little nervous, you know, they knew how to do Google classroom stuff, but you know, once they got into it and I helped them and taught them shortcuts and, you know, Chrome extensions, then they, I heard a couple of kids today say that they didn't think they'd like Schoology. Now they like Schoology better than Google classroom. So it yeah. all worked out. <laughs> well, geez, this uh, half hour has just zipped right by, and I, I had <laughs> I have so much more to talk. We we could talk, I we think, for talk. another couple hours. <laughs> uh, whatever you need, I I'm in. All right. Well, I let me um. Prep now, so let me give you um 
maybe a more focused question. So we've been through the pandemic and I think we're all fingers crossed that we're coming out of it. Um, what are the lessons you've learned from the pandemic? Um, for me, and I, I think I, I learned this because I asked my kids, you know, when I, the first thing we did at the beginning of the year was I asked them, what did you like about the end of the year last year? Like what actually worked for you? Because I wanted to know, you know, with a completely different way of learning what was working for them. And without a doubt, what they all said that they really liked was being able to do things on their own time, um, which makes sense. You know, high school kids with their melatonin release at different times and adults and little kids, like they're up late. And so for me, um, I make sure that I have my week planned out. Sunday, everything goes up into Schoology and the kids really like it because, you know, it's usually due on Friday. They have a whole week to get stuff done. Um, the kids in class, you know, they're doing stuff with me, but the kids at home have really liked that. And I'll tell you, when I look at the times, because, you know, with Schoology, it tells me what time they turn. I have so many kids who are doing homework at like 11 and 12 o'clock at night. Like that's when they're up and awake. And I have lots of kids who work. And I think being able to make sure that your kids know you get that they have so much more going on in their lives other than just school. I mean, in my last class, I know probably five kids in that class who work, like they have jobs and, or they help their grandparents or they help take care of siblings. Um, so there's, you have to understand that. And especially during this pandemic, you know, that they, you need to be, I mean, I know so many teachers are so tired of hearing like, you ha have to have grace, grace over grades, grace, 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 but it, you have to, I mean, we have to just, you have to understand where they're, you know, obviously they need to be held accountable for their grades and get things done. But um, I think giving them that opportunity to get things done on their own time as much as you can is really helpful. So me being, I'm crazy organized. And so everything, you know, having it done the way that I've done it, I feel like it's been really good for these kids. I mean, I put stuff in on a Sunday morning and I have a few kids who do their work for the week by Sunday afternoon and then they're done. They don't have to do my work all week. And I know that they really appreciate that. So I think that's been, and I don't know how that'll work next year because I, you know, kids will be here um, unless they do virtual school. I think there's not going to be the same kind of option. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see those kids who have been successful being home, what they choose to do next year. I don't know you think we'll we'll blend in some kind of be a little more flexible with the work no <laughs> I don't know I mean I think it depends on where you teach um mm -hmm. I know that you know in a state like Texas um attendance is a really big thing and they want all the kids back in the schools so I think your your choice will be a virtual school I don't know if that's going to happen I, I don't know but I, I think you know there's always been there's been e-academies but that's different. So I'm not really sure. I, I don't know what's going to happen next year. I, I hope that, um, I hope that people, it worries me because I love how we've done stuff this year. Um, I, it's hard having kids, you know, on zoom and in class at the same time, but, um, but you know, if kids are sick or they don't feel good or they need to do something and they can still get their work done at home, like, I think it's okay for them to be able to do that. I'm sure that is an unpopular opinion with some, <laughs> <laughs> But I also teach high school, so it's different. You know, it's right. very different when you have juniors who drive and have jobs and things like that. So, you know, everyone out there, don't get mad at me. Remember, that's the kids. <laughs> those are the kids that I teach. <laughs> I know you can't do that with elementary school kids. You know, they I have know. to be. You know. yeah. But for me, I mean, I for high school kids, I, I do like having those options for them. So, I don't know. All right. Well, let's um. Let's dig into a couple speed geek questions. So these are meant to be sometimes whimsical, sometimes just <laughs> fun. You can just you can elaborate on an answer uh, however you like, but here we go. I've got okay. my uh, wheel decide app here. <laughs> so uh, we kind of talked about this, but who or what inspires you? You talked about your mom. Yeah, my mom and then, and her father, I would say, honestly, my grandfather was amazing and lived until he was 97. He was the first NBA doctor. He kind of invented like the whole concept of having like a team doctor for those professional sports. Wow. So yeah, so I grew up, I mean, and he was always kind of an educator as well. Um, even though he was a doctor, he, he taught at Temple University, but yeah, I grew up 
with mm. just some really cool people in my life. And they, he was just, and my, my grandfather, my mother and my father were, are like the smartest people I've ever met in my life. So, you know, the kind of people that can sit with a pen and do the Sunday, like New York times crossword puzzle. I, I don't, I'm not that smart. So, <laughs> you know, know, smart people inspire me who like to read and I don't know, are very, uh, so they, they've always inspired me for sure. Those, those people in my life. Yeah. It's interesting. <laughs> we share that kind of connection because uh, my family is basic education and medicine as well. So oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And that my father used to do the New York times crossword as well. Yes, I, I do. I now do the, I do every morning now, the mini crossword. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. I don't know. I it's can do it. supposed to be I, great brain act brain exercises some days it's pretty some days i get it and some days i'm like what in the world <laughs> i don't know it, it gets better as you do them okay. all right so next one is what's your favorite app oh <sighs> okay this will this might surprise you because i'm kind of i'm thinking i'm older than you i don't know but um i love i love tiktok <laughs> tiktok really i okay. love tiktok okay so i will just say i don't do tiktok but it is like kind of like my guilty pleasure. Like I've taught all day long. I mean, you know how it is. Your brain Uh is just like, um, you're so tired at the end of the day. I will sometimes that's like my little reward. Like I get home and I'll give myself like 15 minutes to just watch. And they're just funny. Like it makes me laugh. So you're a consumer of TikTok, not really a producer. Right. And I'm (laughs) the one who shares really funny things with other people. And I love Twitter. I mean, Twitter, Instagram, like those, those are my, I mean, I'm, probably Twitter and Instagram more than anything, but TikTok, I love, TikTok is just, it's fun. I mean, uh, listen, they can have, um, they probably have all my data, but uh, you know, <laughs> they can have it, right? <laughs> they, can have, they can have it. It, it, it makes me happy. It's like, it, if I need to laugh, I go to TikTok and scroll, scroll, scroll. So yeah. I know. All right. We'll finish on this one. Um, first storage device, floppy well, disk, um, yeah, um, I mean, it must have been that Mac, right? My, that Mac, what was 120? Is that what it was? The 128? Yeah, I think you're right. Like the 128. I mean, was that the one yeah. with the blue and green screen? Or no, the, yeah, the first true Mac with like the Windows applications were. Yeah, and yeah, but like those like, floppy disks. Oh, yeah, like yeah. floppy disks, like that. I, it's so funny to think like you would show, I would show my kids that right now and they probably would have no idea what it was. <laughs> but yeah, that for sure. And And the funny thing is that I have like, stacks of different like external hard drives now and you know i this mac this actual mac that i'm on right now is from like 2009 it's still where it was my like extra screen but it's still it's that old <laughs> so yeah. i'm a mac girl i love my mac stuff i do too they make a they make a solid computer that's for sure yes absolutely <laughs> okay well jamie thank you so much for your time your ideas i'm, I'm gonna check out this uh uh amanda Sandoval, and that, Sandoval. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to check that out for sure. Maybe and uh, some of the other resources you said, and keep up the great work and uh, we'll be following you on Twitter. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs>